When I was younger, I had a huge ambition to live my life on the very dangerous edge, to experience life in all of its delicious extremes. I was excited by the idea of a limitless reality. The potential was within my reach, but it always seemed to be just beyond my grasp. Standing between me and my dreams was a line of fear. Not just fear, actually, terror. Anxiety that was so raw and so immediate that I was forced to shrink and hide and feel ashamed of all my grand ambitions. I was beaten back to what I knew, the safe, the secure, those magnolia walls of comfortable living. This failure to live authentically triggered in me a massive depression. I'd find myself waking at four in the morning in a cold sweat my wife lying next to me asleep, my kids in the next room also asleep, a house full of people, but I was completely alone. I felt like Reynold Mesner, the legendary climber, when he got stuck on the inhospitable mountain Nangipabat. He was too scared to go up, he was too scared to go down, he was too scared to stay where he was. At that moment in time on the mountain, Mesner said that he was afraid to live. I nearly cried when I heard that, afraid to live, that was me, I was afraid to live. The ego, tricks you into believing that you are the only person in the whole world who feels afraid. Mesner told me that it was okay to be scared. Fear is a part of the human condition. We all feel it. And yet, at the same time, at the very same time, he encouraged me to be brave, be brave, be very brave. Lean into the sharp edges. Embrace the fear. Marinate in your terror. Fear is what keeps people ordinary, if we listen to it. Mesner inspired me to be extraordinary. And I was inspired, but where do you go with that? I mean, inspiration is good, but what are the modalities of overcoming fear? Like most people, when the fear hit me, I looked for solutions out there in the world. Specifically, I looked in books. Books that promised to give me the answers. Books that did not deliver. Either the authors didn't know the answers, or they were too afraid to share the answers, even from the safety of a page. I asked my doctor, this was after another long bout of depression, he gave me his solution and I bought the pills and my heart sank because even he didn't know the truth or if he did, he wasn't saying. Then something happened. I hit rock bottom and I just thought to myself, I got really angry. I'm not having this anymore. I'm not having it. I've got a wife. I've got kids. I'm not going to give my life over to fear. I refuse. So I decided to confront my fears, all of them. I drew a pyramid on a piece of paper a fear pyramid, and on every step of that pyramid, I wrote down each of my fears in ascending order. The least fear on the bottom step, the worst fear on the top step. Then, I set about confronting my fears one at a time until I reached the peak. My logic was this, if I could overcome all my fears, I could live the life I really wanted to live, as a writer, a buccaneer, a bohemian drinking Lavazza coffee at two in the morning with my heroes. I could be free, I could be free. And another thing, and I distinctly remember thinking this in my darkest hour, at my lowest point. I promised myself, when I find the truth, I'm going to tell everyone.